All right, I want to welcome everybody from Living Waters International Church's Facebook page as well as YouTube channel. Welcome me here. We've got a special person to everyone, special people to everyone at Living Waters International Church, our very own Harold. And Cindy's going to be joining us really soon, Taylor. And so Harold and Cindy Taylor are joining us at, uh, via Zoom. And uh, Brother Taylor, thank you so much for, uh, and there's Cindy right there. Here I am. Uh, there you are. Just wanted to, to spend a few moments with you all while we're recording this for Facebook later on and YouTube uh, to, to go out later on. Uh, just want to kind of get your take on uh, basically like the quarantine and where we're at and what do you think God is doing in this season with all of us, um, with his church? What is he doing in your lives? Uh, and first of all, I know that it, many people will be glad just to see your faces because everyone at Living Waters loves Cindy and Harold Taylor. Yes. And, uh, so glad that y'all are able to join us uh, through this. And I'm so proud of both of you all, uh, along with many of our senior adults, uh, learning Zoom and uh, getting what I call gold stars. I've been handing out gold stars to everybody, learning it and broadening, because I know that was a big thing that it was a big um I, I reckon you say for me, a, um, a concern, we wanted to make sure every senior adult was able to learn Zoom if they wanted to, to be a part of the small group that we have on Monday, uh, as well as any other things that the church may do uh, through Zoom uh, instead of Facebook. So welcome today on this special uh, recording that we're doing today, just to kind of check in with you two to see how y'all doing. First of all, how are you all doing? We're doing fine. Doing good, yeah. Doing good, good. Y'all been staying in, I'm assuming, as much as right. possible. Right. And you're getting uh, food delivered, uh, groceries delivered, I believe. Yes, yes, and, we are. Uh, been doing that. Uh, and so, how are you guys uh, occupying your day uh, as far as just going through the day? And how, how do you, I reckon you, I can probably ask, how are you trying to prevent every day from looking like the same? Because I think that's where many of us are at now is, it just seems monotonous. Every day is the same thing. How, what, what are you guys doing? Are y'all changing anything up or doing anything different? Or I know the brother Taylor, well, you work a lot, lot in your yard a lot. Right. In, in the springtime when weather's cool, you know, I get out and do a lot of projects and things that I've been putting on hold. But, uh, but I've also been using the time to uh, get closer to the Lord, to uh, do more reading, to uh, uh, been listening to some ministers uh, online and uh, ministers who uh, have been inputting into me uh, a lot. <clears throat> but uh, so it's been a time of spiritual growth and I, I feel like that's what the Lord is trying to say to us. And, uh, individually, but also as a church and as a nation, yeah. you know, to get to get back to the things that really count, and uh, that's what I want to do. It's what I'm trying to do. And he's being successful. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how she can tell that, but uh, I can. I'm <laughs> your better half. I know everything. How you act at home, probably. <laughs> You're much nicer to be around, probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's always nice to be around. Right. I'm pretty sure yeah. he is. I'm pretty sure he is. A lot to say that. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Brother Harold, you know, uh, you and I have talked a lot about uh, in recent months about the Sabbath, uh, taking rest, resting the body. Um, and, and even you uh, shared with me about a message uh, that was done by Robert Morris that I had an oppor opportunity to hear as well. Uh, and, and you and I were talking about the message, but there was a part of his message that this quarantine reminds me of a little bit. He was talking about being on a sabbatical and how he had not taken a sabbatical. And, and I can't remember what the 52, the number 52 number represented, like 52 days into his sabbatical. Uh, 52 days into his sabbatical, he felt like this tremendous amount of relief and rest and and assurance. And he, you know, he inquired of the Lord, you know, like, what is this? What am I feeling? And he said, now you have, I, I have gotten back my Sabbaths from you. 
And, and I just remember that message. And, and, and it was like God saying, now I got back what was mine. And you and I have talked a lot about Sabbath and rest and making sure that we honor the Sabbath uh, every Sunday, making sure we're resting our bodies and taking extended rest. And I thought until this quarantine, I was doing pretty good. And it hasn't been until this quarantine I realized how wound up I was, uh, how how stressed I was about things. Uh, now the quarantine brought its own amount of stress um, and, and work. Uh, many pastors believe today that we're, um, I, I reckon you could say, working harder than we were before. And and just because, and I think we all feel that way because we're having to adapt. We're having to wrap our heads around so much new stuff and at the same time, but I really thought that I had grasped rest until this happened. And I realized I did not really know what true rest was. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if I even still know. Um, you know, my family probably would tell you that I don't, you know, because I, I just, you know, every day I get up with a list of things I want to get done and, and uh, want to accomplish. Uh, what, what, are, what are your thoughts about all the quarantine that's going on? And, and about rest and, you know, and I was going to ask you also, um, both of you, you know, with your, you know, licking your finger up in the ear, trying to feel where the wind is going. What do you feel during this time uh, that the Holy Spirit is doing to the church nowadays? Just. Well, I personally believe the church is uh, doing a lot of um, uh, introspection right now. Yeah. And I think this is. Uh, slowed us down and we're really examining yeah. um, what uh, what the value of our our work is. I mean, it's, it seems like even in the church, we can be busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Uh, but does it have value? Or I'm not saying it doesn't have value, but is, is it the best use of... Uh, the time and that sort of thing is, is it where God wants us to be? Yeah. And I think this is a good time for us to, to uh, really uh, delve into him and, and let the Holy Spirit uh, speak to us to be still and, and know that I am God uh, as the scripture says. And it's eight uh, o'clock. how's that? Yeah, no, I got it. I, it was my computer giving us the time. So <laughs> oh. it does that every hour on the hour, which is another thing I want to talk about too in just a few moments about yeah. time, but go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, if we come out of this and we are keener in our uh, sensitivity to the Lord, keener to the scriptures, keener to the Holy Spirit and focus uh, and our and we're not just moving for movement's sake but we are uh, doing doing what he's actually anointing you know I mean this this is where I want you to go so to speak and uh, and so that's what I'm, I'm doing a lot of listening right now. That's what I'm doing. Wow. I'm trying to be still and know. <laughs> you know, that, that, I, uh, your listening is hard for some of us, yeah. for, for yeah. some of us. Yeah. I, that, uh, I, I, I'm working on some stuff right now, some leadership stuff I'm bringing out in May, uh, for that leadership initiative for the bold lion and looking at, um, my, uh, personality, doing my personality with the uh, personality tests and things like that. And I realized in that, and this is what uh, some feedback during this time has gotten back to me to make me better is I need to stop talking so much and listen more. And, and that kind of uh, is, is, uh, and, and, and if this moment doesn't uh, get that to me, I don't know what, because like you're, like you're saying, to be still, and know that God is still God. And sometimes for us to, and I, I brought this up uh, in a previous, uh, I don't know if it was the Calces or uh, Sandra Chill on, on this, but you know, uh, I, 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 since that conversation with them, I realized why 
when, as an adult, when we went to school to see the old desk, why they were so small. They were small, tight containers to keep children still, you know, so they can learn. And, and now God has got us in our homes now, which are small, tight containers, saying, be still right now and listen to me, what I want to tell you, you know. And I believe, uh, you know, I don't know, know about you, but I, I, like you're saying, I'm just kind of saying you know, what you're saying, too. I think that this is a moment where transitions are going to take place. Uh, changes are going to take place. Uh, people are getting a clarification on their calling, direction, and or vision at this moment, because before the noise that consumed us before uh, is now gone, you know, I had, I had to, I, uh, uh, Harold and Cindy, I was uh, and at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, I used to leave here at our home about 6.50 in the morning to go to the office, and that would put me in Stockbridge around 7.10, going through downtown Stockbridge. Yesterday was the first time that I went through downtown Stockbridge at, at about that time. I had to go and uh, actually pick up some stuff for uh, some work being done on the home. And uh, when I went through, I got back and I told Karen, I said, Karen, I said, I can't believe how at that time that I'm so used to the QT gas station being filled up with cars, getting gas and things like that. It was hardly no one. And as I was going in, I was thinking, oh, this is like Sunday morning. No, Sunday morning is much busier than what I saw yesterday morning. And, and, and we are, everything's just getting still right now. And it's just, you know, um, and, and, you know, what are your thoughts about that? You know, is it, is it almost like due time? Do you think that it's like almost due time, like, like overdue for God's people to be still? I think it's way overdue. I think it's overdue for the church. And I also think it's way overdue for, for America and also the world because right. yeah. we have, um, America has uh, ground for, would, would grind for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no Sabbath rest. Uh, and it does make me wonder if, if this is not uh, God giving us a wake up call and say, look, uh, you, you mentioned the Sabbath. And I think that's um, those same thoughts have gone through my mind. Maybe this is us catching up on the Sabbath rest. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> and there's no um, there there's no guarantee at this point when we're coming out of this. I mean, uh, yeah. hope hopefully um, from an economic standpoint we'll come out sooner than later. But I want God's will to be done, yeah. regardless of uh, how tough it gets. You know, I want His will to be done. Uh, I'd like to see America come out of this uh, uh, revived, a, a revival moving through our country that just transforms us. Yeah. Um, and so I'm optimistic about it in my spirit. Or I, take, I take pleasure in it in my spirit because I believe the Lord is speaking. Um, I think he has given us a window of opportunity, and I hope all of us Christians will will take advantage of that window of opportunity, and let's move move through that and um, consecrate ourselves to the Lord again, and pray for revival, pray for the redemption of many souls, and His will to be done in our lives. Um, and uh, he's got a plan. He's got a purpose. And uh, we are part of that plan and purpose. Uh, and may he help us understand what our little part might be and uh, to move effectively within that. But we need the Holy Spirit. If we talk about effectiveness, we need the Holy Spirit to do that. And uh, without the Holy Spirit, we're just like um, like a cardboard box, if you will, yeah. not uh, uh, 
not doing much, uh, an empty cardboard box, I should say. And uh, we've got to have our foundation built on the rock, not sand. Yes. Otherwise, the house will just wash away, just like a yeah. cardboard box would. It just yeah. crumble. Yes. How, how, how would you, what would you do to recommend, what would you recommend for someone, I use the term lean in during this time, how would you recommend someone to lean in to what God wants to do during this time with their life? Many maybe look at this video and go, you know, when my circumstances is I'm at home right now with no job, no income, and don't know if I'm going to be kicked out of my apartment right now, or I don't, I, I'm not without a job. I don't have any income, but I'm waiting to return to work. Or I don't have a, I mean, I have a job. I'm still working from home. Uh, you know, what would, how would you, what would you recommend for someone right now to be able to take advantage of this time to really lean in to, I reckon I could say, use the phrase from, you know, the scriptures to hear what the spirit is saying during this time for their life. And during this time, what would you say? Well, I would say um, lean in as much as you can. Lean into Christ both through his word and listening, listening to his word. Uh, because God does speak to us. He speaks to us through his spirit and his word. But probably more than anything, he speaks to us through his word. Mm -hmm. That is his uh, communication to us. And um, if we can get more into the word, be still and listen. Uh, even as we're meditating on the word, allow that word to seep in, transform, and become a part of our, our very nature and our character. And uh, uh, that would be my advice. And I know families where where there are a lot of children, the be and steal part of it is a much tougher issue. Uh, that is true. <laughs> I remember reading about uh, or hearing about this mother who had a bunch of children and uh, her only quiet spot was um, when she wanted to give with the Lord, she would sit down, pull her apron over her head <laughs> and uh, tell her kids that uh, when you see this apron, you leave me alone. Yes, exactly. And, she, and that was her quiet place with the Lord. Yes. And uh, so, so we we may need to get creative, but we need to do it somehow. That's true. To, uh, to get in the Word and uh, pray and listen and let the Holy Spirit guide and direct. If we don't, uh, we become exhausted internally or, or spiritually, spiritually exhausted. Once we're spiritually exhausted, then we really, I mean, everybody knows it because yeah. our attitude follows right in line with it. Attitude and actions. Yeah. Uh, you know, yes. it, it just all plays into it. Yeah. If we're at peace on the inside, then the external does not uh, affect us near as bad. That, that is so true. That is so true. I know I find my my place to be just by myself is in my car. It, literally sitting out in the front yard in my car. <laughs> and not that's your apron. Just, that's my apron, you know? Uh, and I have found that because it's like if I'm anywhere in the house, everybody feels like it's open range, you know? And, and, and right. just, you know, right, barge right on in and, and do that. And it is very tough. Uh, just to find that that moment, and I and I would encourage anyone, no matter if you have kids, if you have kids, or anything like that, to find your place, find that place. I you know I call it, um, I, I know the Bible calls it that secret. I call it secret place. The Bible calls it a secret place. That place that that is immediately when you walk in there, the presence of God fills that place. You know, and and you can kind of be in tune and tune your frequency to what the spirit wants to do uh, and wants to speak to you at that moment and at that time. Uh, and I've never, uh, this is me, but most of the time, and I can't remember a time other than this, so I can't say it happens to everybody, but it's never been a time where the Lord gave me a, a major uh, 
a word or instruction from him where I was in a crowded place. It was always when I was in a quiet place by myself that the Lord was able to go, okay, I got your attention. Now let me speak with you. You know, let me speak to you and be able to do that. And, and, uh, and, and I, that's why I say that the quarantine is so anti us because, um, you know, anti-Western. Yeah, anti-Western, and and, and and but like you said also earlier, anti-party world, because yeah. technology has pushed us to go, 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 go. You know, yeah. I think I was sharing with you, brother, brother Harold, that uh, I was reading a book uh, around the time I was looking at a lot of videos. I, I actually went on a a, a retreat. Uh, Karen and I did on a cruise with other pastors and ministers, and as I was driving down, I was listening to recordings and I bought a book off of a podcast and things like that with the podcast, the book that I bought was ruthlessly eliminate hurry. And there's, and I bought it for one chapter in there and he does an exhaustive, um, uh, amount of work on time and how the clock, just the clock has in invaded our lives. And, and you know, and, and earlier you were, <laughs> This is so embarrassing. But you said you thought I said something. It wasn't me. It was my computer telling me that it was one o'clock and we're recording this before everybody else sees it, you know, but it was one o'clock when, you know, and, 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 and I have, I have my computer right here. I have a, a clock right here. I have a clock behind me that I turned down just now before the recording because it was so bright and, and, and things like that. But he does all the history of time and you think about how much our, lives are just so much bound by living on the clock, having to arrive here, got to go here, arrive here, you got this meeting here, meeting there, and things like that. And, but people, um, I, I would say that are, you know, in societies and cultures that are not bound by time per se, tend to what we call mosey on in when they get ready, because they're used to not not being defined to start right on time. It's why when everybody gathers and it's a moment that is created, not a, an event, you know, but we are, we're, we're just so bound by time. And I read that back in February and uh, I, I, I want to be able to share this during this quarantine, some of the things from that chapter that he went all the way from when the first uh, clock tower was put into a city all the way to how computers and iPhones and computers we're supposed to change our life. And he talked about the year 2008, how, uh, you know, the, the invention of the iPhone was to change our lives, you know, and it has made us busier, more stressed out, uh, more anxiety than ever before. Remember in the last couple of years, everybody's anxious. Everybody's got anxiety. Everybody's looking for medication and it has just really strung us out. And it's, I, and I feel so strongly that this is God's moment to say, now I got your attention. I want my people to rest. And, and y'all, y'all going, 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 going. Is it something? And I don't know. I don't know. But is this somehow God prescribed in order to allow us just to, number one, stop and rest, also value what is important. You know, now, once again, family is important again, because now we realize that's who we have, or we can't see them because of proximity. We don't want to infect one another, so we're keep keeping our proximity and things like that. Almost like everything is being refreshed and renewed now because of all that has happened. And, and I'm just, you know, I, I just wanted to get kind of like your direction on this. What do you think about that? Is that, you know, um, you know is that where we're at? I don't know, you know. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I personally think that uh, the technology probably has made it too convenient for us to focus on the insignificant and um, and occupies far too much of our time. We we all are allotted the same amount of time every day, and and uh, the God help us to make the right. Uh, the right choices. I mean, we're all we're all in this thing together, uh, fighting to um, fulfill the wills, the purposes of the Lord. 
Yeah. And uh, and I just pray that He'll help us all to to zero in on what He's He's calling us into. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I find the iPhone, for instance, is a tremendous tool. Yeah. Uh, but that same tool can carry you down many, many, many paths yeah. of insignificance, yeah. or it can carry you the paths that have a uh, real value. Yeah. And uh, so I guess, I guess it becomes a personal choice of uh, how we're going to spend that. And the older I get, the more I realize that, of course, you know, I can look ahead and say, gosh, uh, I've got a whole lot more time behind me than I do in front of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, how am I going to spend that time, you know? And I, I want the Lord to, to work within me to um, fulfill this time, what, what time I have remaining. Yeah. Um, of some value, value to to other people, value to their spiritual, uh, their eternal uh, uh, lives. And I'm just praying uh, and covet the prayers of others yeah. that um, I'll come to that place where my words, my actions and everything will be anointed of the Lord. and. Uh, I won't just be uh, killing time, spinning my wheels, and that's sort of thing. Taking up space. Yeah, yeah. taking up space. Yeah. Uh, so of that, what would you say to a young believer today, um, knowing that you have uh, both followed the Lord for many, many years? Uh, what would you say to a young believer today, not only in age, but also a young believer who may be someone who just gave their life during the Lord, to the Lord during this quarantine? Uh, you know, what would you say say to them also what would you say to young leaders uh uh you know younger leaders uh you know what what, what would you say uh to us in that capacity well i would say um fight the temptation to get uh, real involved in insignificant things i mean um entertainment in this world goes 24 hours a day or did go 24 hours a day yeah. and it kills a lot of time uh, if you are a believer and want your life to count then uh, stay in the words stay on your knees and um, be um, i'm not saying that some entertainment is not good you know that we we all need a, an outlet or relaxation and so forth um, but spend it spend your time in the word and in the anointing of the holy spirit and prepare yourself for uh, for the ministry uh, now when i say ministry that can be lay ministry or it can be uh, uh, full-time ministry but um we're all Christians, uh, all of us who are believers are, you know, we are at least lay ministers. And um, Lord, help us all to be effective in that, uh, in that area. A sweet you. Well, I was just thinking back when I first became a, a Christian. Music, happy Christian music played a big part of my strength. Um, I was raising two young sons and uh, the situation was negative and I had to constantly fight the negative from, you know, coming into my heart and into my brain. Yeah. And I found that happy Christian music, um, second chapter of Acts especially, mm -hmm. their music, I'd turn that on and I'd just get lost in praising the Lord. And that strengthened me strengthened me so much uh, helped me know that i truly serve the mansion builder uh, that song mansion builder just i cannot tell you what it meant to me but um and and read the word and um 
don't don't try and do it all at once. Think about what you're reading. You know, you don't have to read it all at once. Um, uh, I'm doing the gauntlet now, and I'm behind because I'm not reading it. At the you know, I'm I'll be honest. <laughs> if I go through the gauntlet, Cindy and I both are behind. It's uh, yes, but, I got a lot to but catch I'm up. doing it. You yes. know, the thing is, you're moving forward. You're moving forward. Doing it. Yeah. You have to trust and believe and know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And don't let your circumstances rule over you. Yeah. Know that God's got you. Yeah. He's got you in the palm of his yeah. hands and he is not going to let you fall. And he's got his angels all around each of us. And we will not fall. And, you know, if we start to stumble, they'll pick us up. You just got to trust, trust and obey. There's no other way, just like the old song says, yeah. um, you know, but don't let your circumstances rule over you yeah. because yeah. you can overcome them yeah. through Christ as yeah. your strength and, and, and who you look to yeah. another, every moment of every day. Another thing I would say is don't get discouraged yeah. Uh, yeah. in, uh, in the small things, right. everything starts at a beginning and it starts small yeah. and your life is that way. It's, it's, you build upon it, build upon it, build upon it yeah. until uh, the Lord does his perfecting uh, within us. And um, I, um, in my earlier life, I would get discouraged because uh, I wasn't where I thought I should be, you know, and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah. but I tended to be undisciplined. Still yeah. tend to be undisciplined. <laughs> We're two peas in a pod there. <laughs> and uh, but uh, but don't get discouraged if if you tend to be a disciplined person. Keep moving in that direction, right. and line upon line, precept upon precept, and stone upon stone. Uh, you're building, uh, you're building uh, a relationship with the Lord, and you can't, you can't learn everything in the Word in the beginning. No. You'll yes. make mistakes. You'll stumble, fall. You'll say stuff that's in error. Yeah. Uh, when you say that stuff, it's in error. Uh, repent of it, and uh, and you know. <laughs> Say, I'm sorry, Lord. I goofed up again. <laughs> but but that's a learning. That's a learning point. Yeah, it is. Uh, we it. learn by our mistakes, yeah. and we all make them. Yeah. So. Uh, and anybody that says they don't make mistakes, they bump their head. That's right. That's true. There's nobody that's perfect except yeah. our Lord Jesus. And Cindy, can you take a few moments? Because uh, I love your uh, testimony, how you came to the Lord. Uh, could you share that? Take a few moments because, uh, first of all, people that may know you may not know. First of all, that you both uh, y'all met each other later in life. Y'all y'all weren't right out of high school when you met, you know. And also, Cindy, uh, when you met Brother Harold, uh, you had you had been divorced. You had two boys, and and uh, talk talk about all that because, you know, I remember one time in small group you shared some things and and. Uh, and, and and I said, you know, and I said then, so this is this is a great platform to do this. I said, I wish everybody could hear this uh, because you share part of your testimony. And many of us around the room had never heard some of the details that you shared. Um, could you share some of your story about how you came to the Lord while we're here? Because I think that would encourage a lot of young believers who are watching this or at Living Waters as well that are coming back to the Lord and and. You know, and, and they see believers today thinking that we came out of the womb as we are today, and they don't understand our journey, you know, and understand that it wasn't like this all the time, how we are today. We had to grow. We had to mature. We had, you know, th we, we've been through things and things like that. Would you share a little bit, some of your story about how you came to the Lord? Well, <laughs> it was on Mother's Day. Oh. Uh, Many years ago, uh, I had reached the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. I 
felt like I couldn't take another step. I thought I was going to die if I didn't get to church that Mother's Day morning. I didn't know where I was going. My precious mother-in-law at that time, Grandma Watkins, kept encouraging me. She was my encouragement and my lifeline during the struggles I had uh, in my marriage. She was a strong Christian woman and I loved her. She was just, well, she was my, my spiritual mother because my own mother was gone. She had gone to be with the Lord when I was 21 years old. And um, it's kind of hard to talk about it without getting emotional, but um, she told me, she said, Cindy, you need to get to church. And I, I felt the Holy Spirit just come down on me when she told me that. And I knew that I had to get to church no matter what. The car was giving me problems, and I thought, even if I have to, walk I'm going to get to church I'm going to get to Mount Perrin Church of God and I walked in one woman and walked out another and I, I called my sister who was in California and told her what had happened and she did a happy dance I could wow. you know hear the joy in her voice because she had been praying for me yeah she she knew what I was going through and um so anyway make a long story short, um, my life changed at that point. I had never heard a message in tongues. I was raised in the Presbyterian church and married in the Baptist church and never knew what the church of God was all about. Mm-hmm. And that, mor- that morning, the message that was brought forth by the Holy Spirit was I love you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. And I love you with an everlasting love. And I I was just weeping and crying. And my hands were up. I had no idea that 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 was going. I cannot explain what happened. And then a few months later, uh, a friend invited me to Trinity Temple Pentecostal Holiness Church. And that's where I met Harold. He was the youth leader at that time, and my two sons um, were under his teaching. Okay. And so the minister, Sister Tarkington, Francis Tarkington, called me and said, Harold Taylor needs an assistant. Could you help him on Tuesdays? And I said, sure. Okay. And um, so I did. And we worked together. Uh, for several years and um, I was during that time I was a counselor at youth camp I was working I used my two weeks vacation to go to the youth camp and be a counselor and I thoroughly enjoyed that and then the Lord separated us he sent Harold to it across this city to another church and I stayed there at Trinity Temple and carried on Uh well during this a uh, good long time period, probably a couple of years, uh-huh. my marriage totally fell. Over. I mean, it was just, it was done. And I was heartbroken. And, but the pastor at that time, the new pastor was a young pastor, Gerald Duncan. And he was getting married. And um, he wanted me to be sit in his mother's place. Uh, during the wedding because his own mother uh well situation was not good and so i told bobby and mark and they went "Ah, you can't do that you can't go to south carolina by yourself and so i told gerald what they said because he had told me to check with bobby and mark to make sure it was okay. okay and so i told them and he said well that's no problem harold taylor is going to be my best my best man and y'all can ride up together. (laughs) And that's how we got back together. The Lord put us back together in the same car for, uh, what, two, two and a half hour trip to Rock Hill, (laughs) South Carolina. And um, and then, you know, from there on, uh, eventually the Lord moved me across town. And Harold asked me out for coffee. (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that coffee's got to be I, in there. I don't remember. <laughs> that be somewhere in there. <laughs> and, you know, it just, the Lord just, um, it, it, he just put it, uh, he knitted it all together. And I had never in my wildest dreams ever thought of him as a husband. In fact, I said after my divorce, I would never, ever, ever get married again. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't say that to God because yeah. he's got plans for you. Yeah, that's uh, true. Might not be your plans, but he's got plans. the best is yet to come yeah. plans. Yes. Still yet to and, come. you know, it just, um, God's brought me through so much. He brought me through West Nile virus. I'm alive and kicking. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's just brought me through so many trials. Like my stepmother used to say, sometimes you have to eat the black bread before you get to the white Okay. And that is true. Okay. My younger years were full of black bread, but I am a stronger, far better person now than I was back then. Yeah. Um, you, know, you have talked about Sister Tarkin before, and she was a major influence in your life too. Yes, she was. And, she and definitely and, was. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, I went to her apartment because at that time I smoked and yeah. I just felt convicted to. I think that's what you brought out in the, in the small group that everybody fell off their chair because they couldn't get <laughs> the <pieces> smoke. <laughs> I went to her apartment to be delivered from smoking. Yeah. Well, we were praying and in her living room, and suddenly, you know, I looked up and there was a bright light. Yeah. There was no light in her ceiling, and it came down on me, and she said, "Cindy, he's here." And I said, who? You know, it's, and suddenly I started speaking in tongues, a Chinese derelict of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I don't know how long that went on, but we were both just praising the Lord. And I just knew that I had been delivered from cigarettes. Well, not so. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a process. It was a process. Yeah. I'll be right back. But, okay. Uh, that was in January, well, in uh, May, Mother's Day again. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at Trinity Temple, and there was a gentleman there who was a guest speaker that night, mm-hmm. and he laid hands on me, and I went down in the spirit for the very first time. Mm-hmm. And when I came up, they were gone. Wow. I, I knew it. I mean, it, he, I didn't say anything to him about, you know, I wanted to stop smoking. Yeah. I, I was keeping that a secret from everybody, <laughs> except my mother-in-law. She knew. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so anyway, and she happened to be there that night. Oh, wow. wow. And it, it, she was so happy. Yeah. And when I went home, I told the boys what had happened, and they took my cigarettes and just tore them up and uh-huh. threw them in the commode and did a happy dance around the commode. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and then after that, every time I was around cigarette smoke, because mm-hmm. the father of my sons smoked, okay. I'd smell honeysuckle. Okay. I I'm, did not yeah. ever smell yeah. the cigarette smoke, and it was coming up right into my face. Wow. And so, you know, God can deliver you from whatever your circumstance. You just have to trust him and believe yeah. and and walk by faith, not by sight, not by what's going on around you. Yeah. Just know that you know when you know her that he's got you. And my mother was true testimony to that. Yeah. My mama went through a lot before she passed away. A lot of illness and pain. And I think that's that's where I got my strength from, was from my mama. Mm. She witnessed to me in a way that she had no idea she was doing. Wow. And I was uh, like, thank you, sweets. I was, well, I, I had to stay at home and take care of her. I missed school because she was so ill. Wow. And um, I just had, I had the best mother in the whole wide world. And I really didn't realize it at the time. So I say to all of you that have your mothers, 
cherish every moment with them because you won't know what you've got yeah. until they're gone. And then you can't tell them how much you love them. Yeah. And I know I hurt my mom, but I learned so much from her. And uh, one day I'll see her again and I'll see Grandma Watkins too. Good. And, you know, just believe, trust and obey. There's no other way. They'll get you too. You? Yeah, they'll get you. <laughs> Yeah, go get a switch or get a coat hanger out of the closet. I think Sue Allenbaugh posted. She remembered getting the switch out in the yard. Well, in my case, I saw that back then in the forties they had wooden coat yeah. hangers, oh, and my wow. daddy would say, "Go get a coat hanger," and yeah. I just I'd I'd be squalling before he even touch me with the coat yeah. <laughs> it was bad enough I the other day on social media only one time my grandmother made me go get a switch and i only remember that one time it, it, you know she used to get me with her hand a lot you know but i do remember one time she said go out in the yard and get me a switch but we had a weeping willow tree out there and you know weeping willow trees are, are very flimsy yeah <laughs> I don't even know if she spanked me with anything, like with the switch. She probably just did it with her hand. But I went and got one of the, the weeping willow branch, little, little thin little branches off of there, and it wouldn't do anything. So, but I saw that the other day on that on social media too about uh, the worst thing in the in the South that someone could tell you to go do is go get a yeah. get the switch <laughs> or something like that. So it it brought that back. Well, both of y'all 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 both are parental figures to myself and many many people at Living Waters and in many circles that you are affiliated with. And uh, thank you both for your leadership in all of our lives. Uh, I know that we, we turn to you all for advice and we come to y'all with tears, you know, and uh, we come when we're anxious or, you know, and things like that. And y'all have, uh, and, and, and uh, no, one, no one at Living Waters International Church can love and, with hugs like you do, Sandy people. At Living Waters, I mean, you are. I, I, I think your hugs are so uh, uh, bring a lot of people healing, uh, because you know a lot of people that attend Living Waters come hurt and damaged, and uh, they are damaged goods. And I believe that you know your ministry is so powerful at Living Waters by just your phone calls, um, you know, that you make and the people that you hug on Sunday. And I know that you have physical limitations, but your reach goes much further than those who are freely able to move about, you know, and God has used you in such mighty ways and both of you all to give wisdom and encouragement and um, to cheer all of us on as we're going through our own things. Uh, Y'all have been there to, uh, you know, be there for all of us and, you know, coming among you know, uh, Mother's Day, Cindy, you are truly a mother to so many of us, uh, and a grandmother too, you know, to so many. And a great grandmother. And a great grandmother. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and you were, you were just, y'all are both there for everybody. And we know that we can lean on you all if we need someone to be in our corner, just to pray with us, uh, check in on us, you know, ask us how we're doing. We know that you're going to be there, but you are, have so much wisdom and experience that I knew a video like this would help so many people by just getting you on camera. Plus, I know people want to see y'all and they want to see your faces. Uh, and they see you all on Sunday uh, and, and haven't been able to see y'all in a couple of months since we've been in this, almost two months uh, in this. But I know people will be glad to see your face. But I wanted to, I wanted them to hear your voice and also to hear um, what the Lord has done, but also what, what, God, what we believe God is doing right now at this time. I wanted to share something with you all, but also everyone on the video, and I'm probably going to share this again. I shared this. I was grabbing my phone several minutes ago because I wanted to share this. I shared this in small group on our small group this week, and I'm not sure if y'all were in there when I shared this or not, but this is what I was sharing on Instagram. Traffic is gone. Gas is affordable. Bills extended. Kids are at home with their families. Parents are home taking care of their children. Fast food replaced by home-cooked meals, hectic schedules replaced by naps, rest, and relaxation. The hair, air seems cleaner, the world quieter. People are conscious about hygiene and health. Money doesn't seem to make the world go around anymore. 
doctors and nurses are being praised and recognized instead of athletes and celebrities. And we now have the time, finally, to stop and smell the roses, yeah. the positive side above it all. I'm pretty sure that this was God's way, and this is how I concluded. And I did. I, this is not original. I got this off of social media somewhere, and I really loved it. I believe this was God's way of telling us to slow down and stop destroying others, you know? That's uh, right. And I think that as we were talking about earlier, that if we could just lean in to this time, to what God wants to do and, 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 and be still and watch what God would like to do during this moment, then I believe that we're going to see God do great things, not in the masses, but in our own personal life, you know, and that we will have our own experience with God that when we come out of this, it'll be that moment that we want, we want to return back to because it'll be our own Bethel. It'd be where we met God and did that. So, well, if thank we're you so healthy, much. Then, yeah. If we're healthy, then uh, we can be a whole lot more help to other people. Yes. yes. It's kind of okay. like a picture. You have to, you know, before when we had cameras that you had to focus to get a clear picture, yeah. I think that to me, that's what this pandemic is doing. It's giving the world a clearer picture of what's really important, not what, not the, um, like Harold said, the busyness and, and uh, the stress that we've all chased. It's yeah. time to slow down, like you said, and smell the roses and let the picture, let the fogginess go away and yeah. let us all have a clear picture of what life really is all about. Yes. It's not yeah. about the worldly things. It's about what lays ahead. That's right. You're so right. You are so, so right. Well, thank y'all so much for your time. Thank you so much. You are well, welcome. Thank, thank you. you. We Good love you, and we miss our family at uh, Living Waters. Amen. Everybody misses everybody. We love y'all so <laughs> yeah. much. You miss so many. Yes, everybody. Uh, yeah, we can't wait to get back all together and get under one roof. And do We're that. all going to um, do the happy dance. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> exactly. Well, love you both. God bless you, okay? Okay. Bye -bye.